All right, uh, good evening, guys. Kenneth at Tortoise Capital, Nightly Strategy Podcast for let's see, April 3rd, 2023. Amazing to think we've already got the first quarter of 2023 in the can. Uh, I'm going to be totaling up the, the R's and doing the analysis on the March set of uh, swing trades. Um, I'll get that done this week. We'll start with the uh, swing tr- the swing trade portfolio update. Uh, let's see Alcoa. And so these are all on the thirty minutes, thirty minute bars. Again, that's our hybrid between three minute pure tactical, thirty minute this hybrid time, and uh, and then daily charts which are pure swing. So that 30 minute gives us a nice ability uh, to flex in either direction. Like you could start with a three minute that became a 30 minute chart, which became a daily swing. You could have a daily swing setup that you execute on a turbo with a 30 minute. And that 30 minute might lead you to a three minute bar for even more detailed uh, treatment, you know, if it was really a good, good opportunity. Uh, so here we go. Um, Alcoa, we, uh, we exited that trade. It was coming near into a previous resistance level near the 10 day high. Uh, and then the last three days have been nothing but kind of a grind. Uh, but I'm actually prepared tomorrow based on today's good work to start with a zero state like this and then look to get long intraday with and then add a swing trade here uh, if it breaks out above that 10 day high conversely if we get if we get market weakness tomorrow I'll be ready to trade this one down towards the 10 day low Uh, and so that's what uh, Alcoa looks like Uh, Caterpillar uh, was a trade that we started yesterday. We held our nose, took the SSC early, and that thing closed really well. And then today it opened, it could not make a new high and started to sell off. And on the basis of not deserving good luck, but being willing to take it when we get it, uh, locked in about four and a half to five R on that one then the rest of the day it just kind of monkeyed around and stabilized right here now what's good about that is that it held at a price level higher than the previous day's main line if you will so that feels like the actual improvement that was retained by this exaggerated move up and then the harsh sell-off so this feels like a correct price and that's a significant improvement over this one, which actually cleared that previous resistance level. So that really feels good. And therefore, I will be ready to trade this one north of the PSAR flip tomorrow and add a second position here if that should come to pass. But if this starts breaking down, I think I want to wait until it breaks below this price level uh, because then there would be a decisive move to the downside. So. Uh, Caterpillar is a little more complex, but I'm actually feeling that tomorrow uh, could be a good day for it. Uh, Cliff, I thought, was in better position than Alcoa. It actually made the PSAR flip today, and we had that long, and then we waited for this all to settle down. And then today it gave me the uh, Kata 2 right there in the last hour, so we took it on a speculative move with a standard risk. And uh, let's see what we get tomorrow. I would be willing to convert that to a swing if it takes out the 10-day high. Um, The short side is not, this was not as aggressive a move up. So I actually feel like that's a natural grind. Um, And because it is not in a hurry, I don't feel like there should be a lot of selling pressure tomorrow. I mean, I guess there could be, but I would not expect that and I would be really surprised by that and I think I only want to set this up for the long side I would rather play some other more volatile moves um, if we get weakness tomorrow like like Alcoa for example I think was 
better position for the short side. Uh, CVS, so this is an example of the cost of, uh, of preserving capital. We didn't get this gap up, and then I had other span of control issues, so I missed that first burst in that first 30 minutes, which would have been a massive gain if I'd have held. But, you know, yeah, the big ones get away. Uh, so this spent the rest of the day in that nice tight range right here. And now it is supported by the PSAR. So if this goes tomorrow, that should be an instant add right here. That should be instant long. Uh, if that if that fails, I, I want to see what the rest of the market is doing. If the rest of the market is selling off and this is failing, then I think you can play that short to here. First step, second step to here third step to here and if it breaks below there look out below so this is a uh, this is a for sure long if it breaks out if it fails I want to see market confirmation uh, first uh, the Dow has just been grinding along so I'm not trading that directly but you can see why you might want to with futures uh, dish was a uh, legacy Godzilla uh, which had sold off harshly gave us this little bump and so on that basis we took that as a kata 2 in a Godzilla here yesterday and it closed very well and then today it just started selling off and nothing like this is supposed to go and it didn't so we just captured the little no lose plus dinner for two for our trouble and then watched it fail now tomorrow what's the plan on this one well there's still a support level holding right here at the low of the day which if that gets violated tomorrow then that's an instant short because of the power of this move the fact that it hit a double top and could not proceed any further tells you that uh, all of these gains are now at risk because it's had one and two runs to the top and it got stuffed so now if this fails the move back here is leg one and if it breaks below this all of the things that made it bad for a Godzilla will be in full force so this should be a high priority short with a second position here uh, tomorrow Devon Energy was, uh, uh, you know, I couldn't stick around for the grind. I let it talk me out of it. Um, I had no compelling reason to get back in. And so the opportunity for that one-time big burst was missed. But again, it closed in that tight range here. So that feels like the correct price. And now it has to prove, I think, out of this zero state that if it goes north from here, get on board if it goes south I want to see weakness in XLE and USO and if those are heading down and this is heading down that's where I want to be short is in Devon okay and the targets would I think be back around 49 so there's a nice downside trade there Uh, Electronic Arts, this is a grinder that we got on board with yesterday with that really tight stop, which is the same that we've had all the way through its life cycle, so nothing unusual. And yesterday it closed very well with about 2R in hand, and we kept that. And then today it gave us a gain, held, and then started uh, another Kata 2. So I added a second position and it closed very well at the very top of his range so we're holding on the first position one two three four five that one's plus five and then this one is plus one so we're holding about six R of markets money uh, what I'm gonna do is move my stop up so that I'm risking one of those R on two position meaning that I will retain four R out of the six R if there's any weakness uh, if this continues to go higher, 
Uh, I could see adding to that position on a grind. Um, nothing wrong with that. Um, and then my brother points out that uh, on the nine day, since we're here, um, on the nine day, if we drill up, you can see now that this thing is ready to do a PSAR flip um, on the uh, on the nine day. So uh, on the nine day, the sell off has occurred. Now it's got momentum, and now this is just about ready to break out and go. And then that would want to lead it to 135 from 121. So there's still a 10% implied boost in this thing if it can just keep piling on that momentum on the nine day. So uh, that's a way to convert ultimately these three these uh, 30 minute bars into longer term trades. Let's see emerging markets. Let's get back to 30 minute. Yeah, so uh, emerging markets is recovering nicely here. And um, we got that first little burst in here. Uh, I got out of this one here because it hit the PSAR. It had rejected that gap up, and it was selling off hard. And I finally couldn't stand it anymore. And so on that one, I wanted to collect the plus three. And then it closed well. And then yesterday... Uh, the PSAR flipped and it started its grind and that looked like it was just in this continuation like it had it had shaken off that sell-off so on a spec we started it and it closed pretty well right here so uh, on the basis of holding plus three yesterday we kept it for another day and it replied with a nice little recovery and then this is a I treat that as a kata two continuation because this is this has cleared all previous resistance so why not and then it closed well so we're holding uh, on this on that price level there uh, one two three four five plus one is six so just like the other one we're holding six R and again if it breaks out and keeps going, I'm willing to add a position, and I'm ready to put my stop uh, right about here. And if that fails, we'll keep four of the open six, but I'll also add a position if it's going up. So standard play. All of that feels correct. Oh, well, that's because that was EA. No wonder it looked just like that. So we heard EA twice. Well, it's nice to know it was the same plan on the basis of the chart sorry about that so you got to give me you got to give me plus one for consistency am I right <laughs> uh, okay so here's EEM so that was the nice trade that we exited uh, yesterday on the failure to follow through it didn't it sold off uh, and today it was just failure to fail and uh, the market felt strong going into the close, so I put a little speculative play, standard risk. We're holding about 0.5. And if it breaks above the 30-day high, which happened way back there, uh, then I could add a position here. So uh, EEM, speculative. Uh, Ethereum uh, didn't catch that one today. That would have been a nice little one, one point bump. But, uh, you know, this is cleared. It's at 860, and it wants to go. Man, it wants to go. You can't short that one, but, boy, the long side sure recovers. Uh, Mexico, so we exited that little three-headed monster of goodness. It had one day of sell-off. It accelerated a little bit today to the downside. But then it just, I think it was just clear in the deck of the weak hands. And then it had a nice orderly recovery. So that's a cot of two all day. And on the basis of that strength, I don't mind taking that one at all. And uh, there's our risk. And I will add to it if it makes a new 30-day high. And let's see that one tomorrow so we can have something nice to talk about. Mexico. Brazil, same play. Uh, this had a nice... Uh, 
one position gain, a one position gain, because we had our multiple positions in Mexico because it was stronger. But I think the sell-off was a little less, and it also made the PSAR flip. And on a standard risk, I'm ready to go. I would add it the 10-day, new 10-day high, and then I would be targeting the 30-day high for a third position. So let's go Brazil. Intel. Uh, we had a, in the life cycle of this, a nice three-bagger. Uh, played one on the long side, and then it couldn't hold, so we exited. Today uh, is where that exited for about a 1R gain. But then it didn't fail further, and it closed really strongly. So I just re-entered it on the basis of having some markets money and being uh, an optimist by nature. Uh, so we measured out one little bit and said, you earned a shot at it. And if it breaks above that 30-day high, it's off and running. And this is Intel. Uh, that's on my specialty list right now. I've been believing in them ever since they got murdered and have made a recovery. And plus the government's saying they're going to put $35 billion into U.S. chip makers. I think Intel's too big to fail. It's like a big fat bank. Uh, you want chips in the future, you got to have a healthy Intel, and that's how it starts. Uh, with a little cash transfusion. Um, so we missed all of this in international paper, held our nose and got this one started. Today it started to fail, so we just took the 2R and made a meal out of it, and uh, no overnight risk. I'm intrigued by this little position right here. If there's nothing else better tomorrow, I could see re-entering. Uh, if there's nothing better on the short side and this is failing, I could see that one. But that's I sort of reserve that one for unless there's a, if there's something better to do, I'll do it. IYR, same thing. Took the little bump of uh, one or two R, and uh, it closed poorly. Uh, but if that R10 breaks. If that R10 breaks, that's a candidate for short. And looking for a target down here at the five-day low. I was expecting more follow-through today, to be honest. It just feels like the techs have the juice. Uh, regional banks, nothing going on there. I just think the uh, people can't even remember how the pain and suffering in there. I just think it's dead money now. And uh, all attention is shifted to tax uh, and marijuana on the downside. Holy mackerel. I don't feel so bad about missing that now because we hit that one at the open. On This this was a gap up and then sold off through the PSAR, through the Dragon, and I can take a hint. So we got short here. Then it hit this little shelf and started failing again right at the collapsing Dragon level. And that closed poorly on two positions. And uh, this one is holding one, two, three R on the first one, and maybe one R on the second one. So that's about four R. And uh, we'll lock in three. I think we'll lock in three with the stop. I think it's more like five R. We'll lock in the stop right there. And I would look to add another position if that collapses. But man. That's hard to believe that it's that bad. All right, so this is um, PBW. Had a nice boost. Tried, and then it failed through here. Today's little sell-off, and then it closed poorly. Uh, I was really tempted to try the, to pre-position a short here in case we get a gap and smash. Because th this little gap right here offers no support whatsoever. So I would not be surprised to see it gap through that and fail. But if this is an orderly opening and takes out today's low, I'm so short uh, because I think it closes, it crosses that gap, and then I'll add a second position short. Uh, I'm digging that. Uh, and then today, and then tomorrow, if this breaks to the upside, I'm ready to get long and a second position here. I just think tomorrow PBW is a really interesting play. 
because of just how tight this consolidation is right here. It's, this is a max range compression, so any breakout from that is likely to be well rewarded tomorrow. Uh, Rivian was a uh, a re-entry to the upside. That this was a pretty nice little trade. We got out of it because it was failing, but it put in a Kata 2 re-entry, and I just am trying that on a spec uh, with uh, one unit of risk. If it breaks above the 10-day high, we'll see. If that's the best thing going, I'll add a second position. But I'd be happy to have a good one-position trade in that one. So this is Treasuries, and we had a really nice move. Uh, this was the short side. We didn't take the SSC, but we did get the Kata 2 in a second position yesterday. And it just had, it hit the heights today and then gave us the crossover through the Dragon, hit the PSR, and I just said, well, enough is enough. So plus three on the first one, uh, plus one on the second one. So about a four R very orderly swing in treasuries. And that sets up either a Kata 2 resumption to the upside or, more likely, a sell-off back to the 5-day and 10-day lows back in here. So I'll be ready to play that in either direction. Routine. Tesla. Um, man, I got smoked on this one at the opening. So we had a, this you'll recall yesterday, my glee at holding a really big trade in Tesla to the upside on three positions overnight. That's what greed sounds like. Uh, no, I was just exploiting markets money. Okay, whatever, dummy. Uh, one, two, three, four. Minus four R on the gap down. So I think this was like 13 R. Uh, we gave back 12 on that play. So like a sore tooth I, that became a stop and reverse uh, like a sore tooth and this is my revenge trade so short one when this broke second position came down to here and I got out of that one so that I could recover one two three four so we got four back and I learned my lesson no overnight risk so what are you gonna do you lose some uh, but just think if that had been great it would have been great yeah Quit dreaming, dummy. Uh, and then U.S. Steel. Uh, this was just an observation trade. This is becoming, you know, a sideways quiet channel and a, uh, a Z3 pinch here pretty soon. So I'll have to go take a look at the other one. So I'll be ready to play this one on in either direction. And off we go. All right, that's the swing trade. So my brother asked me to refresh our memories on, um, you know, the difference between an MMRB on a three-minute day trade and a 30-minute hybrid swing day and then a daily swing. And this has to do a lot with whether or not you're, you're looking at it on the gap. So what you're seeing on, the, on a three-minute is the R10... MMRB, which is one-tenth of a range stat. And then on the 30-minute, you're looking at probably three times that, so which is about a frog box, because there's about three frog boxes in a range stat. And then on, the, on a swing trade, I like just using like 10 times the MMRB. 10 MMRBs is a range stat. And what's nice is that your position size is about, you know, this is one-tenth, that's three-tenths, and that's ten-tenths. So by having those frames in mind, you can use standard sizes for, uh, for your work. Now, my brother asked me about the gap stat. Only if you want to specialize in advanced trading techniques do I want you considering the gap stat. What the gap stat does is gives you the statistics of the gap for that symbol. And it's only, it is exclusively using gap information to fine tune the size of the gap. It calculates the, like the last 200 days of the absolute value of the gap 
and express in either direction doesn't matter and it expresses that as a percentage of price and you can then use that to determine how much overnight risk you really want to take as it just for general purposes in a rule of thumb if you're using the range stat that's 99 times out of 100 larger than the gap stat so if you're using the range stat for overnight risk management you are well protected against an abnormally large gap stat but if you want to make a habit of that uh, it and want to use advanced techniques and really refine your position sizing based purely on the statistics of the gap that's an advanced technique and I'm happy to teach that to advanced students but for general purposes for 99 percent of us keeping in mind the range stat frog box and and the uh, the R10 is plenty sufficient for managing normal risk on a lot of different symbols but if I was wanting to specialize in one particular symbol and really become a master of that symbol and how it behaves then that's when I'm going to start using the specialized functions of gain stat fail stat uh, uh, gain stat all of the individual performance measures of a single system that's good for options too uh, but that's if you really want to specialize in one symbol then you get paid off by really going to that level of preparation but if you're doing kind of a general purpose large portfolio management like this that's probably too much information uh, from ease of management and my spider sense is that you'd probably burn out on that pretty quick unless you've converted it to robots that's a difference that's an even more advanced technique like the guys are doing with dr. Morrison uh, and the forex so for our purposes Understanding the R10, which is one tenth of a range stat, for the three minute charts is, is pretty good. For the 30 minute charts, using three tenths of that or three times the R10, which is probably a frog box, is, is good enough. And then if you're looking at daily charts, using a full range stat for position sizing overnight risk is pretty good. Okay? because that's going to be larger than the average daily range and that's protecting you against a considerable uh, risk I'd have been in much better shape with the like the Tesla trade where I just got smashed I was using three times the MMRB and that's how you give away 10 12 R like a dummy so don't do that but man the stories I would have told if that worked in my favor <laughs> don't do that stories don't matter cash money matters all right uh, back to the um, let's go to the um, sniper trade of the day so now we're on three minutes so this is a symbol uh, that had um, uh, closed here then had a great whoops then had a great big gap up here rocketed all the way to the top rolled all the way back down to the bottom and then closed right here creating an enormous OR3 so in general if this thing breaks out of this I want to be long if it breaks down below that I want to be short which means conceptually inside of this yellow zone space I can trade inside here but I've got to be able to break that probably like into four chunks so that if I see it get up here and start to fail I can take one unit of risk and then have a three to one to the downside and then if it hits and comes back and I give that back I could capture two or if it came all the way down here and started to recover I could give it one aim for three and settle for two so uh, I, I need to be able to trade in between those mechanical entries long and short by visualizing the size of my MMRB and determining how many of those are inside that channel easy enough to do because I already know what my MMRB is because of preparation 
So this thing starts monkeying around. It gets a little bit of a um, almost like a compression. It breaks down to here. That was not enough for me to trade it. Uh, I wanted to see. I was really waiting for the breakouts to occur. But now we're about 30 minutes into the day. It's starting to find its its legs. The market itself is starting to recover a little bit. I'm noticing a one, two, three entry just about ready, and the dragon is still sloping up. So I'm feeling like if that could be one, maybe I could get two to the top. So that's how this is starting to feel. Uh, I, I notice that I've got the R10 has is failing, but the R30 is rising. So that I'm not ready to trade that until all of that resolves. Is this going to be support on this rising piece R? You know, is there a chance to play a breakout from the R10 peak with the emerging dragon? I'm getting paid to patiently wait, and then it breaks above the dragon. And the R10 gives me a rising low. And the PSR is providing some support. And it's cresting the dragon here, so that feels pretty good. And I want to be long if it breaks out above here anyway. I should put that in green. So if I can put a standard risk box on this rascal... I've got a, almost two to the upside. Um, why not? Hold my nose. Grinding. Come on, boys. Nothing. <laughs> so that's a classic example of uh, wishing <laughs> and fishing. But I'll take the no-lose plus dinner for two if you don't want it. If you don't want that gain... Please uh, make the checkout to me and drop that off in the mail. I'll take that. Uh, now it breaks, and now I'm front running the uh, collapsing dragon here. There's your PSAR flip. I waited till here to get, because I was actually hoping this would recover. So I take the short standard risk. Check or hold. Now that it's violated the uh, short side here, the red line, I feel like, uh, you know, I, I'm glad I'm short. And now i got to be thinking about, um, I've got this, you know, I've got this much in hand. How much of that do I want to preserve? Uh, probably, you know, from here, I want to go to about, about here, to the top of that little piece. So I want to lock in that gain, and I'm just giving it this much to play with. So that's about almost an R, maybe 0.7. I locked in an average win, let's put it that way. Oh man, now it's really good. Where's my second position, dummy? forgive myself. Dummy is my key word for forgiveness. So if my stop was here, I now probably want to have it here. I could even live with that. And if this fails further, I should be adding a position because I got two R in hand now. Stabilizing on my best day. On my best day, this is a really good cover. That's like a one, two, three, and out. Uh, I ended up settling for that one at the edge of the dragon, uh, which is still faster than the. I get. I keep more 
than the Pisar. So this is like splitting the difference between Southern Skin of the Dragon and the Pisar. So I'll take that one, and I'll take that short, and that's about 1.5. Checker hold. Uh, it's exactly 1.5 now. I just put my little calibration tool on it. So one unit of risk. There's the plus one. That was plus two. So that's about half. That makes that about 1.5 on that trade. Even if I take this one, that would have been about you know half an R. And on my best day, I've been a one full R. So that's that's pretty good. That, I treat that as a stop and reverse, caught uh, an SSC. Uh, I like this one. I just had the, you know, I had the test. It had 10 bars to fail. Never did. PSAR solidly in place. It's above the hump of the dragon. I could see it getting to here. So I'll put the second position on here, even though that's only about 1R. Don't try that at home, kids. Starting to fail. Starting to fail right where it failed before. Uh, why am I not out there? I should have been out. Oh, got lucky. Let it roll over, and it gave me a better exit than I think. Better practice would have been here. But that's what the orderly RL10 rollover looks like. So what are you going to do? Caught a two re-entry. Checker hold. Quick loss. Stop and reverse. Quick scratch. It's like, okay, I get it. That's enough for the day. Uh, this thing is just... Um, it really didn't last long outside of that... It couldn't break through here. It could only get that high. A couple sideways chops and nothing. And I'm frittering away the tiny little gains I've made. So let's just call that one a day. And we'll leave with about 2.5R on that one. I thought about this one going into the close. And said, so now nah, it was too choppy. And so I didn't get the extra R or half an R that was available there. So... Uh, about a C plus kind of day. Uh, you know, it does does an old man good when I go to the chat room, and I see Agnieszka, and I see her little thumbnails like this, and I already know it's going to be fun, and I know it's going to be fun. Alrighty, so uh, Woj going about his business. Quick snack, quick snack for 1.6 and Devin didn't even get the big easy move. Uh, gets the rollover in Tesla, nails it, tries one. I, I don't know if that's premature. I like that. If this is the one that murdered me for minus 12. That's the advantage of just not carrying overnight risk. Uh, and then he gets paid on that one. So 2.7 and 1.6. So he's 4.3 on the first half. Smarty pants. Uh, um, NVIDIA gets uh, tries one, stops in reverse, crushes it for 1.7. And gets uh, a, a scratch in here. So six for the day. Nice. Uh, 
uh, Tim's got some nice work going on in here. Uh, there was a 1-2-3 available. He waits for this. I think takes a good exit. The reversal could have been as early as this, but that's about as good as it is. I think you got to take it here, crossing the dragon. Maybe that's where you are with the slippage. But then he, he does crush this one. Uh, comes out of this at a scratch. So uh, on this kind of big hard sell-off and then a 1-2-3, where's the risk? Why not? It's got this gap to close. Take it. Uh, Intel, he gets, uh, let's see, where's my drawer? Gets a nice gain, gives a little back. Uh, he stopped trading. Uh, this, this is the natural, normal place to be on that one. Gets 1.3 because he is able to get the, uh, the play on U.S. Steel. I love the stop and reverse that gets paid. And this is a beautiful exit. Not waiting for this. That was the one I was thinking about but didn't take either. Um, really good discipline all the way through. Net positive day. Good. Um, this is Agnieszka's. Boy, she just hits it just right today. VWAP break. Crushes it, perfect exit 1.5 in the pound Aussie on 30 minute chart. So this is unhurried. Uh, this is the Euro Aussie, unhurried 30 minute bars. Collapsing dragon breaks, so she just nails it and is satisfied with 2.2. I like it. This is uh, oil, uh, light, sweet, crude, uh, psychotic trading, PSAR flip, decisive break on the five minutes, 1.2. What a nice day, about a five plus R day. Really well done. Good intern work. She uh, Just to have watched her progressing through the gears as an intern just trading at her pace as she feels ready just admirable um, let's see Luke with the five minute Aussie PSR flip locks it in two quick scratches and a micro loss keeps firing thought about it on the emerging dragon Thought about it on the collapsing dragon, or I'm sorry, on the K2. Thought about it on the K2, didn't. And takes 10 on the first position. And if that's 10, this is plus 8, plus 7, plus 5, depending on which one or all of them you take. So that represents a potential for 20. I love the 10. I love the 20. And there was more. F uh, five minute Aussie. Nice work. All right, so bullish normal, everything good. Strong bull starting to develop. What's nice about this just starting to make its move is that the the strength the ADX is actually showing weak trending, and that's what the beginning of a strong growing up bull looks like. This is a bull that's starting to get his legs on, risk on, digging it. Your min pain includes things like Home Depot, Dow Jones 30, Johnson & Johnson, Walmart. That's a rock-solid foundation. And there's still plenty of room to go on Intel to the upside if you want the tech boost. Man, this is ideal. Uh, without going into all the details, 
nothing is on um, the auto framer because everything is making new 10-day highs. Look at all of the, that's broad-based strength. Read the signs. Uh, same thing in the ETFs, except marijuana, which is that short that we just saw. Meanwhile, everything else. Energy and Earl was strong. So uh, I'm happy about that. We're on the right side of the angels. Uh, zero symbols test out for the auto framer. Quite a large number of squeezes, though, including small caps. That's an interesting proposition. Uh, check in the Godzillas very quickly. Just a couple here in the S&P 500, and they're pretty much stealthy. And nothing in the tactical symbol set, because everything's already working. If I recall... Uh, this VND is a VNO is an oil company. The one-day movers were pretty tame in terms of the size of the um, uh, you know the sigma of the one-day move. Uh, this is just starting to get traction. Uh, standard sniper auto framer stuff. So I've sorted this one back in the usual way by the uh, reward to risk ratio. This is a time to just reinforce that earlier lesson about the difference between the size of the risks. Notice that the R10 for VXX is 56 cents. The range stat, of course, is 10 times larger at 550. And then the mechanical risk is about two bucks. So it's about halfway between each of those. You can you, you could use the uh, that one or the um, uh, or a frog box, which would be about which is also about three bucks or two bucks. Um, so that gives you three clear choices on the appropriate size of the risk box. Um, yeah. Tesla still, uh, these are the ones that are better than the S&P. Uh, Tesla down 6% today is only 0.6 to 1 reward to risk, but it's only a buck intraday for the, uh, for the uh, R10. Uh, the Qs and Treasuries are both postured better for reward to risk than the S&P. The dull, boring Dow and all your metals are more fully valued. Um, Intel is winning the battle against Texas Instruments and NVIDIA in terms of relative strength. So there's some good choices in there. Uh, only two symbols out of our tactical stack have aggressive five-day volatility, Intel, Simon Property Group. Otherwise, dude, it's been a really quiet one in five days. It being dominated by a long, slow growing season in the summer. That's ideal growing season to the upside. And this also reveals the multi-time from NDX, reveals just how broad that strength is. And again, anytime you see a lot of these greens, and you see most of them in the 2-day and 10-day, I like to just differentiate there so I can see which ones were stronger longer. So that's where you see things like this, the euros and the globals, and oil, and Europe. And even the S&P is a broad market. When the broad market itself is good, yay. McDonald's and Apple, Chevron, Exxon Mobil, Coke, 
Walmart. Those are all the staples that are really giving you the broad basis for strength, like in the Dow 30. And that's a solid foundation. And then that allows technology to accelerate on a broadly strengthening base. That's how I'm playing the next couple of weeks. And then finally, when we go to the uh, frog list for trading value, which is based on a combination of large average range percentage and the consistent frog quality number, Tesla comes in uh, the best, uh, averaging 4 and a third percent intraday moves and a strong frog, five percent in marijuana, three and a half in clean energy, and there's your there's energy in the semis. Intel still in good shape. So those are the good traders for the intraday, and those make nice combination plays for that core and turbo approach in the hybrid. So that's everything I got for today. Take good care. See you tomorrow. More good news coming.